Hi, this is a tutorial about how to organize your workspace in Clip Studio Paint. And as you can see, this workspace is a mess. So we want to show how to make it how you want it. The first thing to notice is that um, Clip Studio Paint User Guide on the net explains how to do this. And it's underneath Window Operations, Palette and Palette Dock Operations is where most of the information is. But that documentation is not very visually oriented and it's a bit confusing so here's the tutorial. Now I have a bunch of windows just all around everywhere to just kind of show you how many th different windows there are. For example right now I've got all of the palette, uh, the material palette um, items out separate and where you can find those, let's say that you lose them. So for example I've got material image material and I'm going to hide that and material color pattern and I'm going to hide that and let's suppose that you've got a window that you're trying to find and you, you don't know where it went well if you go to window you can see all of these different uh, windows like the sub tool pin and you can see that over here um, command bar all of these different things and underneath material we see the ones that we just hit hit were the color pattern and the material uh, image material so if I click on that that window will come back up. So you can always go to window and hide things or make them visible. Now the next thing that you want to know is underneath window there is a thing called workspace and basically workspace allows you to organize all of the different windows and palettes in uh, Clip Studio in the way that you want for your particular workflow. Now what do I mean by that? So uh, we've got this mess here and when I click on workspace you'll see it's um, this is associated with the coloring workspace so what this means is I have been I had the coloring workspace loaded and I've organized uh, the palettes or the windows in the way that I wanted and so now I have other different workspaces so for example for animation if I click on that it will come up and it will ask you do you want to import all of these different types of settings? And if you say yes, it will completely rearrange things according to the way that you last used it when you were working with animation. So if I go to a different one, different workspace, um, painting, I may have the toolbar in a different location and notice I may have tabs for the materials and things organized differently. Now realize that this workspace, it will keep track of the state of that workspace as you change it. So it, um, it will be different from its original setup. If you want to revert back to the original, you can reset painting. And if I click on that one, it says reset painting to the status when it was first registered, when registered, um, yes or no. So that means that when you first registered it, and what does registering mean? Well, registering means, let's, let's say that I organize my uh, windows in some way that is new. So I can, create, um, I can create a new name for that. So register workspace and call it new workspace, for example. So now I have a new workspace, and that's what I'm working with. Um, and then manage workspace I can go in there and I can delete existing workspaces if I want to and I can rename them and those kinds of things. So the main point here is that you can have different organizations based upon the type of task that you're trying to do whether that's animation, illustration, um, comics, whatever types of thing, coloring, inking, if you're familiar with the word workflow, you can think of it for a different organization for each workflow. Okay, so let's go back to the mess that we had before in the coloring workspace. And I'm going to hide some of these material um, windows. And as we've said before, they don't just go away. They're just hidden. So clearly the first thing that we see is the, these palettes can either be docked, and so this palette here, this Material 3D, is a docked palette so that as I uh, change things, the width and height, 
Um, it doesn't just float in space, and this is a floating palette, if you will. So the palettes can be docked or undocked. So this window here is referred to as a palette. Any of these windows, so for example, there's a Material 3D palette, there's a Material Pose palette, and this Material Dot palette. These are all palettes. And then this section here, now if you look, I've got double arrows, and when I click on that, they collapse or expand. And so this area that collapses and expands is called a palette dock. And so we actually have palettes that are docked in this area here. Now, notice over here there's these tabs, and there's also tabs above, but there's these tabs to the side, and that's what this little arrow was about. If I click on that, we collapse everything down except for the tabs. If I click on the double arrow, everything collapses. But if I use a single arrow, it collapses down to the tab, or if I open it by clicking on that arrow, and so the, the palettes themselves open up. Or I can just click on these tabs here, and that opens and closes just to the tabs. And that's a good way to allow you to get to space, but if you want to open up the palette, you can do that. Now notice that what we have here is we have the tabs kind of grouped. And if you look very carefully, you'll see that there are two palettes associated with one tab and another palette associated with the other one. So for example, right here, we're showing Material 3D and Material Pose. And then if I click on the other tab, what we see is we see Material Illustration, and it's taking the entire um, height. If I click on here, the height is divided by the two um, palettes. Now notice I can grab here, and I can move that up and down if there's enough space to do that, I have to drag some other things here. Um, but you can change those heights depending upon what you're looking at. So for example, if we look at here, um, the navigator and the layer property, you can move that quite a bit in the layers here. So you can have uh, those drag those bars there. We don't have tabs over here, and I'll show that in a minute. So let's take this materials dot palette, and let's see where could we put it. Well, I can drag this around, but notice that things start turning red as I move around. And so these are all the different places that we can put our palette. So for example, if I drag over to the left and it becomes a red vertical bar, if I let go, now it becomes its own dock. So there's only one palette in this dock here, and I can close or expand it, and then I can drag it out. So if I click on the, the top of the dock, I can drag it out, and so it becomes that floating window again. Now let's say that I wanted to put it in here with these subtools, and I want to put it above the, the subtool pin. I could drag, and it becomes a horizontal line, and now we see that it is above the subtool pin. If I wanted it to be next to this same docking section with a tab, I can drag it down and put it there next to the subtool pin and now I've got subtool pin or material so I can click and get get to it that way this makes more sense to put it in a material area so let me go ahead and drag it over there now it's there next to the 3d material so that might be how I want to organize things now up until this point I've been dragging this one palette material dot but if I wanted to drag both of them, the Material 3D and the Material Dot, that kind of collection there, I just go to the right where this empty space is and I drag that portion. Now I can drag it around. Now notice, if I do that now, it doesn't actually float like that. It, it kind of docks to the right of the window and it's probably off screen. You can't really see it very well right now. So um, it behaves a little bit differently, but that's how you move it. So if I wanted both of these to be over above the subtool pin, I can drag it over like that. Um, so that's how you do it. You grab to the right. And so we can move those around wherever we want them, as, as a single palette or as a collection of palettes. Of course, if I want to change the order of the tabs, I just grab a tab and drag it, and the order can change. Now notice that the order is also shown in the icons for these tabs. And we notice that we've got the Material Dot, Material 3D, and Material Pose 
all three of those are in this one tab grouping, this one um, dock, if you will. And again, the illustration is in a different dock. Um, so we uh, can organize them how we want that way. So if I wanted all three of these to be next to each other that way, we could do it that way. And notice now the difference. There's kind of like a little separation here if they're um, one on top of each other, if you will. So just kind of play around with that, and you can see. And that basically controls how much vertical space that the panel is taking. So if you look at it, if there's no actual visible break between these, then that means they're tabbed and each one of them takes the entire vertical space. If you look very carefully, I've moved this one down and if there's this space, since they're all in a group, that means all of these are within the same dock. Um, but if there's a space, that means that they're sharing vertical space. Notice that the material poses here. And if you look at the coloring, you can see that what we have is we have the material dot selected and the material pose. If I collect, select, uh, sorry, select material 3D, notice that it shows that those are um, selected. So you can visually see what's happening. Okay, so notice that as I've been playing around with the coloring, um, Remember, we're, we're using the coloring workspace. And as I've been playing around with those things, I haven't tried to save anything. And it saves automatically. So if I go back to a different um, workspace, such as the painting one, um, notice nothing seems to have been saved. But when I come back to coloring, it will be organized the way I left it. And the only way that I know to actually save it is to actually register a new workspace. And um, so if you, if you wanted to change your arrangement just temporarily, um, you probably ought to register that state that you really like. And it, it then, once it's registered, you can reset to that default. Okay, so now you know how to move all of your palettes around wherever you want, including the tools, uh, sub-tools. All of these different things can be moved exactly the same way. But you may notice that over here on the subtools we don't have a bunch of tabs to the right, but for the materials we do. And, and why is that? What's going on? Well, it's a little bit strange, but if you drag the top one up, if you drag it around, you'll see it becomes a great big red area. Um, and so when you let go of that, it, became, it came out. Now at the very top, when we go to the very top, if it's red, that means it becomes its own tab over to the right. So you kind of have to play with this a little bit to get a feel for it because it's a little bit strange. Um, so if I do with a subtool pin, and if I drag that up, and it becomes red like we said, okay, now I, now we can start to, to see the tabs. So bring it back down, and instead I, of doing that, I Move it so that a little bit difficult to do. Let me come back to here, drop it in there. Now they're gone because it's in the same tool. But if I drag it up, it becomes red. Now I've got the tabs. So this here, when I drag it in here, now they're all on the same thing. There's no division. There's all, so all of them are on the same thing. That's why there's no tabs. The same group, if you will. So we have to have at least a second group. So that's what's going on. So here, if you'll notice, for the 3D material, I'm going to drop it into that group. And actually, I should have dropped it into the, to the other group. So let's drop everything into the first group, the first grouping area. Now the tabs are gone. But if I drag it up to the top again, now I've got two groupings. And so that's what these tabs are about. If I drag it again down here, the, those side tabs go away. Um, and if I drag it way up top, if I want to create those tabs, I have to drag up until I see it completely red, and then it will create that grouping. OK, so there's lots and lots of ways that you can customize other things. You can customize your command bar up here. You can customize actions. There's just so many things that you can do to customize 
uh, Clip Studio Paint for your own needs, but at least um, I've shown how to do the workspaces here. That's what I wanted to show, and especially this kind of a little bit of a craziness here about how to organize things. It's beautiful in the sense of the power it gives you, but it's just anything that's very powerful, sometimes it's hard to understand at first. And so that's how you to create those tabs, just drag it up there like that. So I hope that was helpful, and enjoy Clip Studio Paint.